Dave Scott here again from Those Cinema Guys and joined with... Uh, I'm Andrew. And uh, we're in another really cool room. We've uh, got the privilege of doing a bit of a service maintenance call on this room. Uh, this one was put together a couple of years ago, I think 2013-14. Um, so we're checking out how it's performing um, and doing a few reviews. And I thought what a great chance to uh, show it off to you guys and check out some of the tricks that uh, this room offers. It's been a great experience to sit here and enjoy it actually. We were just sitting down having a look, previewing um, how the picture and sound is going at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, uh, we're going to talk about the screen in a second, but there's the, the experience in this room and, and the things that we're seeing on the screen was, was again different to pretty much anything else we've done before. Yeah, this room's quite unique. Uh, we showed that off with the intro. Massive screen behind us here. It's not often we get to go this big in a cinema room and a home cinema room. Um, and uh, yeah, we've, we've had to put in a bit of horsepower and a bit of systems to do that, but it's, it's hugely rewarding because it uh, yeah, certainly has done something a little bit different to a lot of the rooms that we, we are in. No, it's a great experience, the detail on the screen. We were both sitting there earlier saying, look, you know, I'm seeing stuff in this movie I've never seen before. Um, and I think that's just because the, the whole vista, the scope of the yeah. image is something else. You're sort of right, right in there. So, um, yeah, sometimes, well, as it turns out, size does matter. Uh, you can never have enough power. Um, it maybe there's a limit to size, but we're uh, certainly in a pretty comfy location in, in this cinema room. So we'll check out some of the features and see what the, uh, how this room really ticks. Excellent. So we're going to give you a quick look around the room at the moment. Obviously, we're looking at the screen here. Um, on the left-hand side, we've got some bar features. We'll talk about this all very shortly. Uh, but what we wanted to do is give you an idea of how the room's laid out. You can see the front seats here. At the back, we've got a little bit of uh, acoustic control, some nice uh, artwork, the lounges, obviously the projector, and coming around the left-hand side, um, the entrance, and there's a little candy bar tucked in behind the screen there. So I'm going to hand over to Scott now, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the, uh, the details of this room. All right, so we figured we'll start with the seating because, you know, uh, it's all kind of relative around the seat. Uh, other than, of course, the, the structure of the room itself. So we'll focus on the seats. We'll talk about some of the challenges and the insights of the room structure. Maybe on a feature video a bit later on. So uh, the front row here, so it's a two-row ci row cinema. The front row is definitely for people that do like it a bit more intense. Uh, so the seating distance from the screen here is about 3.4 metres. And the screen is a whopping 4.3 metres wide. So we've got definitely got some major horizontal viewing angle. It is a cinemascope screen. So of course that means we're in the uh, 2.35-ish category of uh, screen for the movies. Movies was really the prime objective of these clients. Um, so going a beautiful big screen like this definitely makes you feel like you're at the movies, even if you're in the back row. In the front row, it's super awesome. A uh, bit of a challenge with getting a screen just this big uh, in here was the throw distance, so how far we could actually project um, the, the projector back from the screen. And then the fact that we're going for a cinemascope system means a, a lens system in front of the projector. We'll check that out. Um, so the projector is naturally your, your widescreen 16 by 9 and then the actual lens sits in front. Let's just see that in action actually. So we go with our um, RTI control system. So we've got the projector firing naturally in 16 by 9 with the lens out. And then when we want to go and watch an actual Hollywood feature film of sorts, then the lens in front expands the screen to the full width um, and gives us the CinemaScope immersive video. Um, a few new projectors these days are uh, doing a few zooming tricks. Uh, rather than lens systems, which is uh, you know changing the way we, we can do this things a little bit. But for this system, we needed to order the short throw lens on the Runco. We needed a, uh, a cylindr cylindrical expansion anamorphic lens on top of that. And to capture that picture on the other side of the room, we've got a curved cinemascope screen over here. So it all comes together. We get a beautifully focused and, and raise a sharp picture over the entire width of the screen. Um, this system still needs a few tuning, so we haven't actually done a full condition of the room today. We've come out here and inspected it, and we're actually gonna do a lamp change, because the lamp's actually down about half 
of its original output. Um, I think we're looking at a 20 foot lamb, it's a wide output off the screen when we first installed it and today we're getting about 8. So it's definitely time for a lamb change, still getting a lot of light off the screen this big which is pretty cool, um, but we're going to add a whole lot more pop once that lamp goes back in action. So yeah, that's a bit of a recap on the video and the seating. The, the back row there, that's sitting at around this 5.5 meter mark. For those people that want a little bit more comfortable screen size, then they'll find themselves towards the back of the room. So yeah, when putting together a brand new cinema, we got to look at all of the elements that go into making this room really fun and, and unique or special to every individual client. So for some people, it's uh, the candy bar, it's the movie theme, and certainly for many, it's the luxury and the, um, uh, the style of having your own bar in the room. Uh, so we had to try and fit that in, and in so it doesn't actually upset the movie experience. So we've got down low, sort of more out of visual, peripheral vision way. We've got the, uh, the wine and the beer fridge systems. We've got a little waterproof landing here around the bar and a beautiful jarra finish that's a local uh, timber. Um, and then the whiskey bar itself is actually hidden into the wall, a little bit James Bond style. So uh, it's there when we need it, but we shut down that reflection of light when we don't. So let's check them out. So the black panels here on the sliders are actually acoustic absorption, so we're controlling the uh, sound waves. We're also managing the light reflection, and uh, we've got this really nifty, really awesome bar. Um, we'll definitely sample this up a little bit more later. Uh, what better way to experience um, a movie when you're definitely well relaxed and uh, yeah, we all know a beverage helps us get there. Uh, so really important element to the cinema and if we look closely on some of the glassware, we've actually, uh, they've personalised the glassware as well, which is a really awesome touch. Um, so I must mention that it was a really collaborative effort of the style of this room. Uh, the owners really took a big part of that, so we worked together to make sure that the functional elements were there, uh, the features were included, and it was a style that the family were really going for. So uh, together it ended up being yeah, really awesome. Um, so definitely a really nifty little feature, uh, and one which we love to see in most cinema rooms for sure. Alright, so obviously all the magic's in the detail, there's some major elements which are important um, when designing a cinema, such as gaming systems, bars, drinks bars, candy bars, these sorts of things. But these are the little things that uh, we need to touch up along the way as well. So, um, working through the room here, we weren't really after a, another black acoustic panel or grey acoustic panel, we wanted to add a little bit of theme and style. So uh, this is actually some original art that a graphic designer put together for us, which is in theme with the, uh, the colours of the room. And you'll see that the, uh, the little rope uh, setting here matches in with the entrance setting as well. So as you walk into the room, you've got this beautiful uh, little invitation and a landing um, as well as uh, across the room you've, you've got the director's chair looking towards the screen and the, and the roping as well. So really beautiful touch and uh, this is a sound control panel so the artwork's actually printed to a uh, breathable fabric that allows really great sound control. Um, another important part is the uh, control of heat, heating and cooling in the actual room itself. So um, they've got a dedicated split aircon system so it will obviously uh, cool down or heat up the room as required. Um, typically in a white finish, so we've actually put a little cowling box around the white aircon, painted it the same colour as the wall, and the aircon is basically invisible to the room. So we've got the, uh, the cooling elements that we need in this space. And look, home cinemas do run warm. You pack in sort of four, five, six, seven people, you add in the projection heat, uh, if that's not another room, the amplifier heat, if that's not another room, and uh, you know, cinema rooms are pretty sound tight, which means air tight, which means very still. So you really need a heating and air conditioning system which can recycle the air, keep the room temperate and, and of course comfortable. So integrated that nicely through here without the need of um, having to have a horrible white air con in our nice light controlled room. Uh, surround speakers, these speakers are projecting uh, left and right of the main room and there's actually another set of surround channels just to the rear of the back room, so we've actually got the um, benefits of a 
uh, twin surround speaker system as well as the back channels uh, through here which have been mounted proud a little bit of the feature cabinet and projection cabinet to make sure the sound is projecting into the room without too many issues there um, and we had saw some acoustic panels on the way around the room uh, so the other big ones are fitting the equipment in the room and um, we've got to think outside the box the box being the room um, as to what available space is about. So there's actually a wardrobe on the other side of this building um, or this wall and that allowed us to put the equipment uh, in the other space. Uh, we've got a cooling system where the cool air or the temperate air in the room inducts through the, this space and then exhausts out so our equipment stays nice and cool and it's hidden behind the really cool artworks back here. So on the right we've got space for room to move in the middle and side sections where all the action is. So what's behind the bonnet here? Um, we've got an actually an ADA or Audio Design Associates uh, processor out of New York City. This thing's a really particular processor. The guys hand build these things basically. Very, very high res. Um, but it's also a little bit fussy the way it operates as well. So um, tricky processor, but spades of resolution. Um, that's connected through to the Parasound Halo 5 channel power amps. We've got 250 watts on tap for all the main channels and the surround channels. And then we've got a Parasound Classic series looking after the back channels in this room. So headroom, no problems. The, the, the sound is just silky smooth and it, it, it's definitely very dynamic. Um, Thurman power filter under there, managing the actual power and filtering out what is a pretty terrible grid that we've got here in Perth. So definitely a really key part of a high performance cinema, particularly in our neck of the woods. But as we've heard, really anywhere can uh, take huge advantages with uh, good power filtration and disconnecting off the grid. Um, then of course source components, so we've got music players, Blu-ray players, TV boxes, um, and also the lighting controller lives in this space as well. Um, so that's sort of the most of the gear in here. Whoops. It did start with the candy bar back here, but that's maneuvered a little bit. Um, so again, a few little cool features and the beautiful big Runco projector and lens system. Um, this system needs a little bit of a clean up. That will be our next visit. Um, though, yeah, the this is an X200i in Runco projector. So this is one of the first uh, 3D uh, projectors that Runco built um, in this sort of category. And we really needed a projector with this clout to light up the massive screen that we've got on the other side. So the screen is acoustically transparent, which means we're losing about five to 10% of the light straight away by doing so. Then we've just got such a massive surface area. So we needed some serious output on the projector to really light up the screen. So say we're a little bit low on light now because the lamp's really done its time. Um, so when we reboot this, we're going to have huge pop. It actually has a fair bit more output than the commercial cinemas offer uh, when this one's running at full power. So um, as we cruise through, just some more features, which is really important to have. Uh, this is, I think, actually the Disneyland ornaments where the family actually went to Disneyland uh, some years ago. Uh, so a really important place for them to feature these uh, in the uh, home cinema itself, uh, which themes in beautifully with what is an epic uh, movie and, uh, and you know, company, which is Disney. Um, the rear door there obviously goes through to the other space. Um, we wrap through back to the entry to the room. We wanted to sort of do something pretty special here, so we do have its own little jar landing, timber landing, and we've got the little crowd control uh, features there, which the owners sort of added in as we went along. Um, yeah, it's got a really beautiful, comfortable feel in the answer has come up really lovely. Um, so as we cruise through, a little candy bar, which to say I was in the back corner, it's made its way to the front right, probably for whoever likes the front row the most to be more convenient, uh, which is where it's at. Um, and then uh, I guess the audio system. So behind the screen we've got some uh, big Atlantic technology, uh, they're the 8200 series speakers, so that's an 8 inch, 4 inch mid, tweeter, and then same again, 4 inch mid. 8 inch bass driver 
uh, rather efficient, they were well over, I think they were 91, 92 dB efficiency, they were a THX certified speaker system, and when you give them 250 watts of power sound, they certainly perform. So they're hiding there behind the screen, we've got the LCRs, uh, the centre is a horizontal arrangement, and we'll, we'll throw in some snapshots or links that show a little bit behind the scenes uh, pictures that we took while constructing the room. Uh, subwoofers, sub bass, uh, which is hiding from us a little bit. Uh, don't know where I'm going. I'll show you over here. So we've got a JR Audio subwoofer hit inside. A bit of a mesh setup, so it breathes quite well, although it's hidden beautifully by the cabinetry. Um, we've got four JR subs in this room. So we've got two tucked behind the seats at the back, another two at the front. Um, so yeah, plenty of output. Anyone that knows JL uh, for subwoofer means very nice. Four means really bloody nice. Um, so the last little wrap up, I guess, is the library. Another important component. So we've actually got the Blu-ray library hiding inside the front cabinet here, amongst the subwoofers and a few networking features, and the 3D system as well. So we've got actual dedicated charging bay for all the glasses. We know where they should go, or the family should know where they should go, and they just dock in there, reboot on recharge, so you've constantly got your glasses charged up, ready to go, protected by the foam inserts. So a really nice touch there between us and the cabinet crew to bring that alive. Um, so yeah, look, hope you enjoyed checking out this space. It is a real perler. Uh, we'll offer a few more details. Uh, on some other videos and links, or just hit us up if you want to learn more. Well, that was a great review of the room. Really impressive place. I love the James Bond sliders here. Yeah. How are we going to wrap this one up? Well, with this one, it's fair to say, overall room experience style is definitely top shelf. So we'll uh, very much. top it off in the style it deserves. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That's the way to go. We did, awesome. we did get it. Yeah. <laughs>